Hey there, it's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop here in the Nashville studios today. And there's a new gun that just came out that is challenging the Glock 43X. It is the uh, SIG P365X Macro. And I've got one right here. It's super hot right now. People are talking about it. Everybody's looking at it. Uh, basically, you know, they copied a lot of what's happening with the Glock 43X. A longer grip. Now, remember the P365, pretty popular. Nice little carry gun. But look and see what, uh, what's missing. Just like the 43 versus the 43X. Now, this is the 365 and the 365X macro. So, um, Interesting, a couple really interesting things that they've done with this uh, new gun that I find uh, rather uh, interesting because one of my big peeves about SIG guns and basically all other guns <laughs> uh, was the, the, the grip angle and the bore height above the grip angle. So this being a Glock, Glock 43X, this is the Glock store of course, you know I'm Glock centric. I have my Glock glasses on, so I look at everything from a Glock perspective. The Glock, all the Glocks, have the lowest bore in relation to your hand than any gun that I've ever fired. And I've said that a million times, so I think SIG must be watching my videos because they did that with this new 365X macro. And let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if we, if we take um, the um, 365 and the 365X, and I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll just put them together here real quick. Now this is not an exact science, but it's my take. What they did, they being SIG, is they, they put that beaver tail a little bit higher up than it has been in the previous guns. The 320s, 320, uh, all the other SIGs, you know, the, the barrel was so much higher than your pointed finger that the gun wasn't quite as pointable. This new 365X basically copies or is almost identical to the same angle as the, um, as the Glock 43X. What I'm talking about is right here where your hand goes right there. You're able to get higher up on the tang, higher up on the beaver tail, which in turn makes the gun more pointable because now I don't have to adjust the sights the sights are just basically where my finger is. And I'm going to tell you that every single person watching this video, every one of you, can take your finger and point it across the room at 25 yards and be exactly accurate. You can put a laser on your finger and point at a light switch, and boom, it's going to be right there. We all have that inherently built into us because we've been doing it all our lives. Hey, you, 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 over there. That's what makes the Glock so special. And now that's what makes this P365 special. So... Certainly things going on here that are pretty interesting. The other thing about this PC365 is the grip, of course, the X macro is larger than it was on the standard 365. You can see that I don't have a, a really a pinky grip. And so people, you know, always think about, well, you know, what's the big deal about that? Well, here's the big deal. Accuracy starts with the grip. Anybody can actually line the sights up, front post, rear notch, understand the concept, squeeze one shot off. Ooh, boom, okay? Now, what I'm talking about accuracy and grip is not the first shot, it's multiple follow-up shots. Because what happens when you shoot a small gun like this, and the same thing with the, uh, the 43 versus the 43X with the shorter grip, anything with a shorter grip, when you shoot a, a gun like this, it starts to rotate off of your grip You just because you're not holding on to it. So you end up down here. And that's what affects accuracy, because now your presentation is different versus being up here where you want to be. So uh, the concept of the larger grip is what makes this gun also very special. That's why this 43X is super special, because you can get a full-size grip on it. It's basically a Glock 19 grip with a slim chassis or ch slim frame. So because of that, and because of the way the Glock is shaped with this little Glock hump, you can actually get yourself a full combat shooting grip where you actually take the butt of your off hand and you marry it up to the frame. All right, so now I have a lot of meat on that frame and then I concentrate on being able to hold 
my right hand with my left hand. <laughs> a lot of people don't get that, but that's really the secret to a, a firm grip is that left hand, because I'm right-handed, that left hand squeezes the right hand onto the frame. And I try to get some of that meat from the palm or butt of my hand onto the frame. Now, that's what they did with the SIG. However, they kind of took it a step further. And I really commend them because what they have done is they have provided interchangeable back straps. And there's a small, medium, and large. Uh, currently, this has the medium on it. So here are the two other back straps. And my guess from looking at this large back strap is it's going to be very similar to what Glock features. Because that's one of the things I like about the Glock is that I can get the butt or you know, palm uh, of my uh, right hand onto that and I can drive the gun that way. Boom. So now I've got a very positive connection. I'm high up on the gun as possible and I've got room for my left hand to marry up with the frame and basically squeeze my right hand onto the uh, frame as well, keeping my trigger finger now nice and loose. So what they, SIG, have done is provided this extra back strap that I think, like I said, we're going to change it out right now. I think it's going to marry up and be uh, very similar to the Glock because this one is kind of the standard frame. Um, it, it's smaller this way, so I don't have as much room to get my hand or my palm of my left hand in there. But it's still big enough that I have, you know, long enough in a sense that I have the ability to squeeze it. But my hands, you know, are not huge. I mean, I wear a size 12 shoe, if that tells you anything. Um, they're big, but they're not huge, you know, right? So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm on it, but I still feel that it's a little small for me based upon the fact that I've been shooting Glocks, you know, all my life, <laughs> all my video life here the last 30 years. So, uh, I really like the Glock because of that little Glock hump. Some people don't, but I personally like it. I think it's, it's good. And uh, SIG does not have the Glock hump. You can see now, if you just look at these, these uh, grips here, let's see if I can get this thing married up here. See how the Glock sticks out a little further. Let's see if I can get you a better shot of that. Glock sticks out just a little further right there. That, that piece right there is what I'm talking about. But let's go ahead and, and, and change out this large. It's a pretty simple process. There's a pin right here. So you do need a pin set of some sort. This is the uh, pin set I've been selling for literally 30 years. Uh, they have repackaged it, which is a good thing because uh, this is a nicer package, a little bit more secure in your bag. Uh, they've actually redesigned uh, the, uh, the hammer, too. Now, let me see if I can get the thing open. There we go. <laughs> the hammer's kind of a little different. Still has a nice feel to it. The nice thing about these hammers is it's got a brass tip and a nylon tip. The nylon tip is very important when you're putting the pins back in because you can tap on the frame and not damage it. There's also a steel head right here. You can unscrew this from the bottom and unscrew one of these and put a steel head there if you're using steel. Now, you'll find that when you are tapping a steel pin with a brass head, the brass will get dinged. So this is where you change it out. You unscrew it and you put the steel head in because that will allow you to not mar up that brass piece because steel is stronger than brass. Remember that from the Bronze Age when uh, we were in elementary school, they talked about uh, using a sword. The bronze swords got beaten by the steel swords and uh, that was history in the making. This is a 332nd um, uh, punch, fits perfectly. Same punch is used in the Glock, by the way, to take down. So we're just going to tap this puppy out. And there it comes. You can see this pin has a little dumbbell shape almost because it's got a smaller spot there. Okay, so once I take the punch out, it's always nice to have the perfect punch for the perfect pin. We're going to go ahead and just slide this down and it slides right off, just like that. Pretty ingenious and pretty well made. I'm going to put the large one on. Well, let's look at the small one real quick, just to see how small it is. Why would you make a small one? I don't know. In case you have really small hands. Uh, and, you know, maybe there are some people who uh, would prefer the small one. And, uh, you know, certainly um, I like to have something to hold on to. So I, it, it's a little small for me. But there's what it looks like. Pretty cool. 
I mean, the nice thing is it's so easily changed. I'm going to go to the large one now, and I want to see it. And this is the first time I've done this. So I want to see if it marries up to this uh, Glock hump. They're not quite the same, but it's close. So let me just compare it before I put the pin back in, because I want to leave this one in. Yeah, just a little different. Glock still sticks, you know, I mean, to me, I just like that Glock grip angle. And, you know, of course, I'm biased, and you all know that, so I can, I can say it proudly. I'm a Glock guy. I really do like the Glock. You can see that the Glock still has a little better angle for me, okay? Some people will love the SIG. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, this is, this is a winner, though. This gun is really nice. Uh, we're going to get into some of the other features here real quick, but let me go ahead and drop this pin back in. Now, pure gunsmiths will say, hey, you take the pins out from the left to the right, you put them back in from the right to the left. So I'm going to flip the gun back over. And the pin looks like it's, it's you know, double-sided, so it doesn't really matter which way I put the pin in from the pin's perspective. And this is where I usually, uh, the uh, nylon piece, just tap it in. And what's nice about the nylon piece is you can get in there and kind of use the, uh, the, the tip or the angle just to make sure it's flushed up. And you can see from here that it could come in a little bit. So now what I'll do is take my punch and just push down on it like that to true it up on both sides and it looks like I may have come through at least a little bit more but looks good so there's the large grip easy change very well done um, one of the things I want to uh, talk about right now is the trigger all right they sig have gone to this flat trigger it's a plastic trigger feels okay take up is you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a striker fire, so it's, uh, it's got to have some take up because you're pulling back on the striker, remember? So there it is, but right here is the break, and it's about five pounds, which yeah, I'm going to measure here in a second. Here's the Glock. We're going to measure that. Glock is the same kind of thing, lots of take up. Probably a little bit lighter, just in my perspective. Again, I've got my Glock glasses on. Reset. Boom, not bad. Reset here. Pretty crisp and short. So you can manipulate that trigger pretty fast. So let's take a, a dead weight trigger weight, which is really the best way to uh, measure trigger weights. You know, the spring concept and all those digital things, they just are really kind of iffy in my mind. I've used them all. I've seen them all. Uh, this is so old school. This thing is probably 35 years old by itself. We do sell a newer version of this that's actually pretty cool. Um, it's really the best way to, to measure and be accurate time to time. When I use those spring things, I get different weights almost every time. So, all right. Let's use the, um, the 365X first. So I've got four pounds on here. And four or five pounds is kind of where you want to be with a carry gun. And I'm going to give it a little bit of wiggle and no happens there. Okay, four and a half. Nope. All right, so now let's take the half off and I'll put five. There's two on the bottom. One, two, three. That's five. All right, here we go. Five and there it was. So, you know, but I bet you about five and a half is probably accurate. Um, five and a quarter right in that ballpark. Yeah. I'd say five and a quarter is a, a fair estimate. I have five and a half pounds on here. It didn't click right away. A little persuasion. There it is. So, and that motion, you know, it's kind of hard to determine what that is. So, you know, it, it, could we say five and a half? That's pretty fair. Now, that's factory right out of the box. Glock 43X, factory right out of the box. Here's five and a half. I'll go backwards on this one. See if I can get down on the tip of that, uh, that, that gun there, that trigger. Oops, without turning that thing around. And Okay, five and a half, it clicked. And here's the 43X at five. Yeah, so it's kind of a guy right in that ballpark. Can't get it to go, so I'd say it's probably five, five and a half. So about the same. 
Oops. And I got it down on the, uh, on, the, on the tip of that trigger and it kind of responded better. So let's see if I can see it again. Ah. I'm gonna say five and a quarter. So they're very similar. Different shapes. Let's go ahead and rack them both. See, this one doesn't look too different. That one is there. Different shape triggers. Of course, Glock has the safe action concept. SIG has some other safeties going on. From a field perspective, I basically, I would tell you that the SIG is a better feeling trigger because of it, it's flat and it doesn't have this uh, sharp uh, safe action trigger. However, <laughs> You want to have some fun, and the nice thing about a Glock is we've got a lot of Glock accessories. This is a Glock 43X with a pyramid trigger. This is my gun. So there's uh, five pounds. Doesn't even get close, all right? I've got this thing down to about three and a half, I think. Here's four pounds. Yep. All right, there's three. It's probably not going to go at three, but it's probably going to go right at three and a half which I think is a good number to have. Yeah. All right. So that's another advantage of the 43X is that we have a whole bunch of accessories. And we're going to start working on some SIG accessories as well. But right now we do have the pyramid trigger, which can get you down to about three and a half, four pounds, which uh, will improve your shooting. You know, the bottom line is the more you're yanking on the trigger and the more it takes to, to move and to manipulate the trigger, the more movement is there is in the gun. That's just basic physics there, you know, because you're, you're boom, 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 boom all over. And after, you know, like I said, the first shot is easy. It's really those multiple shots is where all these techniques come into play. And some of the, um, uh, the aftermarket accessories come into play. So uh, right now, overall, you know, of course, I'm a Glock guy. I really like this. But I'm telling you what, I'm, I'm loving this too, especially with that uh, uh, larger grip panel. So yeah, how easy that was. Now, the other nice thing about this P365 Egg macro, well, did I say it comes with a 17-round magazine? <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? Uh, the uh, 43X comes with a 10-round magazine. Um, it's pretty amazing that uh, they have engineered this magazine to accept 17 rounds. You can see they're basically the same size. It's just a little taller than the 43. But... Um, 17 rounds, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's nice to have more bullets. I mean, that's just, that's just the way it is. Everybody knows that. So we do have accessories for your Glock 43s to give it uh, larger. There is a 15 round magazine aftermarket that we sell as well. We've got extensions and all that good stuff, but this is native. We're talking out of the, out of the gate, a uh, 17 round magazine, which is damn impressive to be quite honest. Okay. The other thing is that this gun, all of the P365 X's, come optic ready so there's your optic plate now of course glock does offer an mos version of the 43 x so it's kind of separate a little bit more expensive but um they do offer that and it's uh, actually pretty interesting because uh uh you know a lot of people want them and we're having trouble getting them they're they're, they're difficult to get there for whatever reason, they are not making as many or they can't make as many as they do just the normal ones. Now, that said, my understanding is the gating item was the plate, the cover plate that uh, you know, would come with a gun without the optic. I also understand from my inside sources that Glock is soon to replace the cover plate that is made out of steel with one that's made out of polymer. Makes sense. They have a polymer gun. They were one of the first polymer guns. That said, they uh, will probably be able to put out more of the 43X MOS because I think the gating item is that cover plate. Just takes a little bit more machine time. So now they can stamp those things out in a uh, uh, injection molding process, and uh, the uh, uh, I think they'll be delivering more MOS into the marketplace. And and to be honest, I would think that at some point in time that Glock will just make all the 43Xs optic ready. I would think they should because now that's kind of the new bar. And speaking of optics, um, let's discuss the optics that would work on here. Uh, basically, it's kind of a, a universal footprint that will take most optics. The, um, 
the one that is recommended by SIG, of course, is their SIG Romeo Zero. And this is it right here. Look how tiny that is. I mean, this thing is awesome. We're going to go ahead and do the installation of this in just a second. Um, it's lightweight. It's tiny. It does come with a metal shroud to protect it. You can mount it like that with or without. It's up to you. But everybody knows that as you um, shoot, um, and if you, once you get into the game a little bit more, you'll notice that the optics make you faster and more accurate. I mean, it's really just that simple. It's, it, it is kind of like cheating in a sense that now you don't have to line up the front sight with the uh, uh, rear notch. It's now just put that dot on the target inside the glass, and that's where the bullet's going to go, which is pretty awesome. So uh, all the top competition shooters, all the fastest people in the world, all the guys who are you know, the, uh, the number one shooters you know, for the last decade or two have used optics because they work. So if you're kind of shy about optics, uh, yo, I don't know, well, you know, it, it, is, uh, it is proven. You will be a faster, more accurate shooter. And uh, now, <laughs> what's really interesting, of course, we're seeing a lot of law enforcement guys are allowed to carry optics. In the, in the past, just really five years ago, four years ago, uh, there would be no, no optics, can't do optics. And now all of a sudden, yes, you can do optics because we know you'll be a safer, faster, more accurate shooter. If you're more accurate, you're safer because you're more likely to hit the target you want to hit versus missing or hitting something you didn't want to hit. So uh, uh, the uh, optic thing is here to stay. And what's really cool is that this little SIG optic and all these other ones I'm about to show you are so tiny that they lend themselves to concealed carry, which is pretty cool. All right, so uh, that's the SIG Romeo Zero. That's the one that you know, SIG would recommend, of course. The uh, other ones that fit are the Shield, and we sell a bunch of these. Uh, this is a uh, uh, RMS-C for compact. It also is very tiny. It is pretty darn amazing. It's going to just drop right on, just like uh, that one. Uh, the uh, Swamp Fox is kind of a new version. And um, oh, let's see if I can get this rubber shroud off here without destroying it. Uh, the Swamp Fox uh, is uh, kind of a, a newer company that just came out maybe, maybe a couple years ago that uh, we became aware of them. Uh, our customers started demanding them, wanted, hey, we're doing slide cover plates, or we're doing uh, slide optic cuts, uh, and people are saying, hey, can you make it for the Swamp Fox? And of course we can. And can I buy a Swamp Fox? Of course you can. We have Swamp Foxes. So, so the Swamp Fox has come along. What's nice about the Swamp Fox, it's you know, relatively uh, low price point. Um, although I would say, looking at all these sites, uh, the least expensive one is the Romeo Zero. <laughs> There's the Swamp Fox. It's pretty cool. Let me just put it here so you guys can get a pretty shot of it. And um, it's, I would say, not quite as small as the Romeo Zero. They all have the same footprint, which means that the bottoms are all going to be the same. Oops. I guess I bought that one. So, All right. So then the uh, last one I want to show you is my favorite uh, because of the circle dot concept, and that is this uh, Hullison. I understand the SIG now has a circle dot as well. Uh, but that's not here yet. I know this coming. Uh, Hullison uh, kind of pioneered the circle dot. Show you what that looks like, the circle dot in the middle. I like that a lot better because sometimes the little dot, you know, there are two, MO, two MOA dots. It's kind of hard to see, but the circle brings my eye to the dot. Now, the dot's the aiming point. The circle, you know, is kind of a gross aiming point. Uh, you know, a, a 32 MOA means that it's 32 inches at 100 yards. So when you do the math backwards, you divide that by, say, 4, it's 8 inches at 25 yards. So 8 inches is, you know, a pretty good, you know, full body shot uh, for your IPSC targets or for, you know, any kind of thing. But 8 inches, anything that's in that circle is going to get hit. So that's kind of one of the things I like about you know the uh, the circle dot is gives you a uh, a faster acquisition because now anything in that circle at 25 yards and less is basically going to be hit. You divide that in half again by 12 yards, it's four inches. So keep on going down if you want. But uh, bottom line is um, Hollison will also fit, and I'll show you that when we get there. So let's go ahead and take the slide cover plate off of the Sig and kind of look at it a little bit and then uh, uh, kind of talk about uh, installing uh, that Romeo Zero. 
Uh, I'm going to use a uh, Torx wrench, which uh, it does come with the piece. This is one that actually comes with Holosun, a little easier to use. And um, just remove the screws. It's pretty simple, as you would expect. go okay so I got the screws out and here comes the plate just like so there you go now a couple things to look at there uh, really quickly there's a little hole right here that you got to be aware of and uh, the two posts right there so before I do anything you know let's just you know the plate is steel you don't want to lose it you certainly don't lose your screws so I would recommend you get yourself a little baggie and uh, put those pieces together and put them in your, your SIG box or something like that so you don't lose those guys and put those off to the side. So plates off, easy enough, right? Now, when you go to install this, uh, SIG recommends a couple things. Uh, one, uh, that you use the, uh, if you're using the Romeo Zero, you use the M3 screws okay they also recommend that we clean off the oil that is on top of the slide so that you get a better connection and um, just you know it's a, it's a clean surface of which to mount and then the third thing they recommend to do is to install this little shield which uh, is a kind of a, a 3m paper that uh, will sit right here on top like so. Now you, you take up, you know, the, you, of course, there's a sticky side to this, right? So you can peel this off and it'll stick down. This paper is, is very important as they say that this paper is going to prevent any gases from escaping out the slide from damaging your actual site. So it's real important. I kind of, you know, never really thought about that, you know, that piece of paper and said, well, okay, well, what's that all about? But they, they do have a reason for it because, again, this is plastic, okay? The gases are really hot. Uh, if you don't have this piece of paper, you could melt something. So pretty simple. And that's basically how it works. Um, for right now, I'm not going to glue it down because, you know, we're going to let the person who buys this gun have that option. I'm just going to go ahead and put that on there like so. The Sig Romeo Zero comes with a, a metal sh uh, shroud. <laughs> and um, it also comes with a battery. And one of the things that they recommend is you put the battery in. Now, you can read the instructions or just listen to me, but the battery goes with the negative side down or positive up. It doesn't really stick in there. So if you were to install it, I would say you take your shroud if you want to use a shroud. Now, you don't have to use a shroud either. That's, a, that's a, an option. If you carry this concealed or if you're running, uh, you know, some competition or, you know, you're rough on guns, I would say install. It doesn't really add a lot of weight to it, uh, and it's certainly going to protect the, uh, the, the, the site itself. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it upside down. I'm just going to put it, uh, the uh, shroud right over top, marry up my holes, and then that'll keep the, um, uh, the um, battery in place. So I don't have to worry about it falling out as I set it upside down. So then we're just going to go ahead and mount it down here on top of these posts. Okay, so then that's basically it. And then we take our M3 screws that come with the SIG Romeo, not the M4. Now they have an M4 screw, and that's for other sites, not for the Romeo itself, not for the Romeo Zero. So uh, read those instructions. They'll usually tell you which screws to use often, more likely, they have their own screws in there, which are probably M4 screws as well. So the M3 screw goes in here, and you, you attach it, and that's it. Now, the, uh, the sad part is, is you really can't co-witness with uh, these uh, regular sites, which, you know, is okay. Um, but um, you can put... Uh, other sites on, of course, uh, your suppressor sites, suppressor height sites, and actually co-witness if you so desire to do that. But that's, uh, that's basically it. Then you, you know, like I said, you put your screws in, and then you're basically, you're optic ready. And that's the little package. And that's one of the things I really like about this uh, X3, or excuse me, the uh, uh, 365X macro, uh, is that it is optics ready, and it's a small little package. It's concealable just the way it is. 
Something else I think is really fascinating, which uh, uh, Sig did, is they um, used like a three and a half uh, inch barrel, which I think is the same barrel that comes with this uh, 365. Boom. And uh, they milled a compensator out here, integral or a part of the slide, which is really smart because the compensator is going to eject gases up as the bullet's traveling through. Some of the gases will escape this way which helps reduce muzzle flip and recoil and keeps you on target. So that's a pretty smart play. I think it's going to shoot very soft because of that. Now keep in mind, some of those gases escaping are not pushed back into your hand. So it will shoot softer because of that. Polymer frame is going to shoot softer, of course, but you will feel less recoil in your hand because of the compensated barrel which is a pretty smart play. And of course, it's going to keep it on target uh, shot to shot. And again, you know, everybody can execute one shot into a target. It's easy. Can you do multiples? Can you do threes? Can you do three here and three over there rapidly with pace and with urgency? And that's where all these things come into play. So um, uh, this is, you know, basically a, a winning package. Uh, again, uh, I could take the Romeo Zero off, grab the shield, drop the shield right onto it. And it just fits nice and tight like that. The shield's pretty cool too. Actually very tiny. That's a tiny little sight. And use the, uh, uh, the um, screws to tighten it down. Of course, here's the, uh, the Swamp Fox. Looks good too. And now let's try the Holosun and it will fit right onto those posts as well, just like that. And again, I like the Holosun because of the, um, uh, the circle dot concept. But the other thing about the Holosun that's really nice is the uh, battery can be changed without taking the sight off. And that's a pretty big plus. Whereas the, uh, uh, all these other ones that I showed you, the battery is basically on the bottom and it needs to be removed to uh, change the battery. But, you know, again, that's uh, not a big deal. It's really pretty easy. Uh, you know, if, if you don't joggle it too much or mess with it too much, it should just go right back to the same zero that you had before when you put it on. So, uh, again, these, these guns um, are big because concealed carry is big. Uh, now they have uh, these smaller guns with higher capacity magazines. They're flat. And they're easily concealed, and they're shooters, okay? That's the one thing about these guns that's very different. These guns are designed to shoot. A lot of the small carry guns, you know, they don't, you really don't want to shoot them. They hurt your hands. <laughs> they bounce all over the place. They're just, you know, they're, they're, they're carry guns just in case you need to have a gun. These guns shoot. I know that this 43X is a shooter for sure. We're going to take this into the studio, into the, uh, uh, the range, and compare them both. Uh, I'm very anxious to see uh, how this uh, shoots with this compensator. Of course, that's going to be on the next video, and I hope you join me for that. I'm Lenny McGill. This, of course, is the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop. We do sell SIGs, and we've got some of these, and they're pretty hot. Um, I'm always looking for uh, the next greatest thing. Uh, still, I'm loving the 43X. Um, i got to shoot this to really say uh, there's some great features of this. And they have copied some of the great features of the Glock, being able to get high up on that gun and really make it a pointable presentation now. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how uh, this thing shoots. And uh, like I said, I hope you join me for that next video. Uh, we're here in Nashville. If you're ever in Nashville, a lot of people come here, of course, it's Destination City. Come by and visit us here at the shop. We're like two miles from the airport. So when you get here, just either on the way in or the way out, make sure you drop in. It's a fabulous facility. We've got some great shooting ranges. I've got some great people working in the retail store. And we've got every Glock in stock and a bunch of SIGs as well. Thanks for watching. I'm Lenny McGill. We'll see you next time.